Okay, a little experiment here. Uh, it's a lot of things in this scene I can kind of take it, take it or leave it, and some things I would probably leave it. <laughs> and that's the impression um, colors that I stamped out my imagery, and I think those would be probably better served stamping them in a gray or a black. Okay, I went with a color this time because I was thinking about having this much more vibrant. But then I, I don't know, it was almost too colorful, so I've kind of misted it all over in the background and uh, created this situation where it's um, kind of the whole thing is in varying degrees of fog, except for this much more pronounced branch of the foreground here that I've applied um, both gel pen, paint pen, and some Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White um, paint to kind of represent um, kind of blooming you know, cherry blossoms. But I do like some things that are going on in the background. I think this is a, I don't know, maybe this is a better scene if I kind of crop this off and chop it off right there at the top. Um, but I think this passage right here looks pretty good in terms of just creating a mood and distance and kind of the shimmering look. Yeah, I think that looks better like that. I don't know if I'm too hot about this. I do like this in terms of the hills up here, but I I think this would be better as, like, that's one composition and that's another composition down below rather than kind of on the whole. Or this would be a perfect spot, actually, if I stamped out some kind of quote, you know. Maybe that has to do with spring or something like that. I just stamped it right over the top of it. So, I don't know, I might do something like that in the end result, but, you know, when I zoom in on this, I do like kind of this passage here and kind of the... I don't know, the nature of uh, kind of all those different textures in there and the colors I think are uh, okay. But anyway, if you choose to watch the video, I hope you enjoy it. And I certainly had a fun time kind of experimenting with here, with the this different look right here and uh, some of the different techniques that were um, uh, used within this uh, springtime blossom cherry blossom scene okay we're gonna do it take two on a composition that was attempted last week with kind of varying degrees of re uh, success um i like what it came out looking like and eh, kind of but um i think i can kind of improve on it and that's that uh Kind of that cherry blossom looking um, scene and I've pulled out some stamps that um, I thought could be really conducive for that look. This is um, called Maple Brook but you know we're we're going to make do here and I think this could easily be like a cherry tree grove you know without being cherry trees here but um, there's a lot of foliage on them but um, I think that'll work fine and it it really matches with things like the maple pear and um, the soft hill here, these could be um, some cherry trees in the distance here. And um, I need to contrast that against something else. Maybe I'll use that same um, Rocky Peaks or something like that. Or maybe the smaller one. Or maybe we'll do it um, instead of landscape, we can do a portrait where we have a little bit more space up here. Actually, that might look better. Okay, so um, four and a quarter by five and a half glossy cardstock. Using the glossy because I just have a little bit more control over it, although, you know, I play around with some um, matte papers, but I want to be able to manipulate these alcohol pens and a paper that's going to be absorbent, a surface that's going to be very absorbent is not going to be easy to manipulate, I don't think, but that would be a different technique, you know. I want to be able to kind of move things around a touch, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, now. I'm just inking this up with black right now, and ooh, I think I need to re-ink this. This is looking kind of dry at this point in time, but just to vary things a little bit, make a little bit of a head start on my coloring process, let's pick out some colors that I'll be incorporating into the scene in the coloring portion, okay? So I've just colored everything black just to make sure that everything at least has some color on it. And then I'll ch go into it and try to get some variations. I'll try to get some greens down in here. 
and maybe some pinks up in these tree parts. It's not going to look pink because I already, you know, did it in black, but I might get a tinge of like some kind of, you know, pinkish black type of uh, tone. I don't know. And if it doesn't happen, that's okay. But what I'm looking for here is I'm looking just to get a little bit of variation if possible. If not, then it's okay. Now the fact that this pad is a little bit dry um, will help to, you know, uh, have these colors showing because if these ink, well, okay, now this pad, this pen right here is really dry, so I don't know if it's going to, it's usually the wettest thing where, you know, winds out, so, uh, just drawing some of these, um, of these trees right here, I, I, I do see that brown on there, you can kind of see it right there, where the black, you can barely see it at all, and all I need to do is I just need to re-ink, but going into some of these trees for a little bit of variation, it's going to look kind of weird, and then what I'm always talking about in these videos, just bringing a little continuity to it, a little bit of color down below in the grassy areas and then I'll kind of go back into that grassy area and blend that brown out a touch or you know I might be blending out some black I don't know and let's go into these trees a little bit um, the, those blossoms really wouldn't be kind of amongst the, the the green yet I don't know maybe there might be a tinge of that up there I'm not really quite sure um, I don't know if this is the best color for this, but let, let's do something else. Let's go a little bit darker, or use a, a combination. Maybe this magenta is a little bit too magenta. Oh, here's a, this is a number eight violet. Yeah, okay, that's really dry. These pens, by the way, you can pop open this back and put, take out the, um, the, uh, the reservoir, ink reservoir, and add ink to it, if you have the reinkers, of course. If you don't want to invest in reinkers for things like these pens, you can always just, instead of just throwing it away, just add water to it, and you'll get a diluted version of that hue. You know, it'll be less intense, and it'll be lighter in value, but, hey, you know, what, you know, who cares if, you know, if it's the difference between tossing it out and, you know, not having a, an ink that's true to the, uh, you know, the color noted on the cap. Just maybe keep that in a separate area or whatever. And, I don't know, get, a, you know, a little bit of a second life out of it. All right, these little, little pink trees up here. Let me add some of that down there. I don't know, this may, this is probably going to stamp out crazy, but we'll see. All right, let me let me add a little bit of darker values up there. I think that pink might be too light, and then I won't be able to kind of color it in at all. Um, because if I color it, if it's a really light color to begin with, you know, we won't see any of the, uh, the tree uh, um, formation anymore. Okay, let me test this out. If it doesn't stamp out well after all that coloring, then I will restart. But we'll see. Let's test it out. I used to do that type of um, color mixing on um, stamps all the time uh, when I was working at a stamp of the hand when we were hand indexing all of these. Um, little pieces of paper that slipped underneath this acrylic cover on their, uh, on their, uh, stamps. Okay, that looks all violet, so that violet became the dominant color up there, but that's going to be this pink tinge, so, I don't know, I think it looks okay, and I've colored it down there as well. I'm leaving this open space for this, um, branch to come in here like this, and to hopefully have a little bit of a, kind of a close-up, um, cherry blossom branch. Uh, that's the concept, at least. What it ends up looking like in the end result... Uh, I have no idea. And that's the truth. Okay, let's go with these... Um, or this image. I'll, I'll probably make two impressions, I'm thinking.
This is a uh, soft hill. Okay. Let's bring some green down there and pink. You don't really see any pink up there at all, do you? Um, I thought I would get some, but none. <laughs> Okay, so we're just running a little bit pink and green up there where pink overlaps green. It'd probably just be some kind of dark um, hue of some sort. Running some brown in here as well. You know, it. I would say it doesn't matter at all. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this, but it doesn't matter as much as you might think, you know, to have these impressions a given color because we're going to bring in and be bringing in a lot of color into it anyways this is just kind of giving us a little bit of a head start on the color scheme right and if an area is going to be green then why not have kind of a darker green inherently in the impression all right now i mean you could just stamp this all out in you know black and then color it in but you can see these different um incarnations of that color scheme um, in there inherently in the designs are kind of nice you know to have that going like that okay let's see what colors did I use in here I used green this is like an olive green this is number 15 uh oh I don't know if that was called olive green or what um, I say uh-oh because I, it's like I used to know all the colors and just uh, by heart. Fifteen. I guess I don't remember what green that is. <laughs> what, what's happened is um, I used to know all those colors of the, uh, the Marvy pens, um, but if they didn't make it into a, uh, if Marvy, who cheated, didn't make it into a, uh, a Marvy Matchable pad, you know, then I, I started using Marvy Matchables almost exclusively um, for a while, and then I just don't remember the names of all of the pen colors because I don't use them as frequently as the uh, 40, or was it 50? 50? Gosh, I can't even remember how many uh, Marvy Matchables they had. Okay, so two impressions with those hills. I kind of made it a little bit off center just so it's not so you know, pyramidal in terms of the uh, structuring of this uh, composition right now. All right, I'll bring in that pen later, um, branch later on. And do I want to have some additional form up there? I, th I think I do. Uh, doing these things with um, the, uh, coloring these scenes with uh, gel pens and alcohol pens it really occurs to me that I really feel the need to kind of fill up the composition just so I don't have these wide open spaces because I just, you know, don't have a lot of control over that type of um, texturing that happens with the uh, alcohol pens at this point in time on this surface right here. So I like to uh, kind of fill in a little bit more so it'll mask out kind of um, kind of some undesirable textures that might appear from having to fill into extensive of an area um, that's on the scene. So it could be anything. I could put some clouds up here. Uh, we can put another mountain. We can put mountain and clouds. Uh, and then I can have all kinds of different clouds that I can use, so let me go figure something out real quick. Okay, I changed my mind. I think I'm going to go for another kind of hill um, in the background. Let me get really light in value. Uh, I can even go with a different color, maybe. Let's go with the... It's going to be back in the... Um, kind of in the mist. Let's put some green down, okay? And then... Let's go with some blue. You can go with a, if I had a gray, that would look fantastic as well. Uh, nice if I have a grayish tone. Laurel green, boy, they have a lot of colors in Marvy. 
I barely even use this and it's really dry, but I'll just uh, put that ink back into solution. I'll add a few drops of water in here and that should reinvigorate it. It should uh, put those dye based inks back into solution, but this is really dry right now, which is actually good because it's kind of removing ink as well as mixing. Okay, now on this one right here, I'm really going to wipe off this bottom portion. I'll, I'll kind of wipe off the whole thing because I want a really light impression of it. And those that are kind of new to line think that, you know, kind of stamp placement and um, kind of composing a scene is complicated, but you will not come uh, encounter a more simple form of masking, I'm convinced, <laughs> in the stamping world than scenic stamping. And that you don't need to mask real careful because you want images to blend in with one another. So you can do that eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, whatever. And I really draw these designs to be overlapped into one another, like that, okay? Yeah, if I look real carefully, it is there, but, you know, going into this mountain, but who cares, because you're just going to run in a bunch of colors into it. And you're going to um, be uh, a kind of obscuring those types of marks anyways. All right, let's go for another one up here, and I've just masked out those two areas again. I can use this for a smaller portion, so hopefully those hills, you know, the end result will look like they're really kind of going back into the distance. All right, now another thing that I just got um, when I was thinking about the background was this water texture stamp. Now a lot of times I do this water texture in kind of in the end, I tend to look and see what colors um, have formed in there, what values of uh, colors have been utilized, but let's just stamp this out in a light blue, okay, in our water. Now remember, I have that branch that I'm going to stamp down there, so I don't want this water down here to be too um, dark, you know, because this is going to go into it like that or like that, I think. All right, now, challenge is on. Let's see what I can do with this. And I'm not terribly confident um, about this scene and this entire technique, but uh, for me, anytime I try to approach something, I, I don't, I'm not afraid of trying something new. Um, because I don't, I don't really care if it comes out or not, I guess you can say. I mean, I'd want it to, ideally, but um, I figure when I get down, you know, when I get to the end of any given scene that I'm working on, if I run into problems, um, sometimes the bigger problems are the ones that I learn more from, so I don't know. I, I think it's a kind of a healthy kind of um, approach to whatever you go into, you know. Um, you'll know just more than you did going into it. Um, be it a success or not, or, I don't know, characterize one in your own mind, or our minds, or whatever, when we get into it. So, all right, color schemes. I'm going to be working in pinks and greens in here, uh, and blues down here. We'll try to keep it real airy, though. Um, I think I'm going a little bit too dark, and then having to kind of bring it back a little bit too much. So, I think I'm going to try to stay with some lighter tones, and we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I don't know. I think I went a little bit too dark with it before. Um, my tones from uh, some of the experiments last week. And uh, maybe I'll try to keep it a little bit lighter, at least. Okay, so kind of going into my grasses. Well, <laughs> what I'm doing a lot, too, and the stuff that kind of helps me is... Um, the ability to go back into these scenes with some white pigment ink and to kind of mellow out some areas that become a little bit too dark, too vibrant, and not terribly, I don't know, harmonious or whatnot. 
with the surrounding imagery and textures and kind of overall color schemes. And that, that's not just with this um, medium. Um, it happens, you know, with the in medium media that, uh, that are, you know, kind of more of my, um, you know, I wouldn't call it specialty, but um, things that I've been working with the most, which are dye-based things, okay? A lot of those compositions just, they just uh, look better, kind of, when I'm able to kind of obscure um, kind of the weaker areas of those given compositions. And it, it makes the be things that look, you know, good better, in my opinion. So, white that being said, the white pigment ink that I bring into this, let's just give it a little bit of a head start by not making it so dark to begin with. So just kind of coloring this in. I see all these trees in here. Um, I think maybe I'll color in the trunks. I'll, I will spend time doing some browns on these trunks, so maybe I'll be a little bit careful to not apply it in certain areas. But don't be too overly careful, though. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm retaining some of the lighter areas, the white. Okay. So within this background down here, there's a little bit of a, a change in value and whatnot. But it's very subtle because I'm working with the lighter tones right now. All right, that was, um, I don't know what color that was pale pink? If it was this one. I think it was this one. This one is called pale lilac. A little bit of more purplish tinge to it. Let's go in here and it's just ever so slightly making um, certain areas darker. I'm basically applying it Generally, in the area that I've applied the pink, I'm trying to avoid, you know, going into the areas that I've where I've retained the point of the paper uh, white. Okay. So the areas that I've left white with the pink, I'm leaving it white with the lilac. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't do, you know, expand on something and change, but I'm just saying just in general ret retain some of your lighter areas, you know, the darker you get into it. All right, now these some of these background hills, let's go with a little bit of that, a little tinge of uh, some pink back in there. It probably wouldn't be as, um, as vibrant, so maybe I'll just put a little spattering back in the distance. As far as the technique is, I, I don't know what I think about the technique, but it sure is fun, and that's the main thing. All right, this is a fuchsia. Fuchsia, it's about the same value, okay, but it's brighter, so that means it's going to be a little bit more pronounced, so be a little more careful. Maybe you can do this type of thing, you know, I'm doing this type of thing on here. That's the type of look. I'm not doing this, you know, with this, with this color. It, which doesn't mean you can't. That's just me right now. And kind of work it, playing around with this technique. Get little touches of it here and there. I want this to kind of shimmer and whatnot. I don't know if I've done that using these pens, but that's kind of the, the general idea that I'm going after. I want that those colors do. I don't know. I want them to somewhat ha capture the spirit of this reflected, very bright hue that you might see from blossoms of any sort, you know, tree blossoms, fruit trees and whatnot, when they're blossoming.
there's this uh, Japanese company that's called Sakura. I used to pronounce it Sakura, but I think it's Sakura. And that means cherry blossom. Um, but I used to use their uh, white paint pens a lot. That was before white gel pens came out, then I just think gel pens in general are... I, I believe they're, they're superior uh, to the paint pen. I love the paint pens, though. And when they were flowing, they were fantastic. But uh, I think as far as the uh, longevity of the pen, the... Uh, uh, the gel pen is better? Maybe. <laughs> when I say that, though, a lot of the gel pens, early gel pens, used to really jam up, you know, and stop flowing, so I don't know. Maybe not. The gel pens are a little bit more user-friendly. The, the white paint pens were the ones that have that little piston inside that you shake up and it mixes the paint. The Sakura one was, um, it was very translucent, okay, so I like that if I wanted to get a very subtle mark because the colors underneath would show through, so if I put a white uh, paint pen mark down, it really wouldn't look white if I did it over, and I would always do it over color, but it would look like just a lighter version of whatever color I was using it over. There was this other one. Oh boy, I can't even remember the name of it or what company it was from. Uh, they used to have uh, silver and gold pens too. Pen, it was it? Pen Touch. Ah, oh boy, I can't even remember now. Um, but that one used to be very, very opaque. I should really look into that one too because I haven't really been able to find a real good opaque white gel pen as much as that white paint pen was. Okay, just putting in a little, little dot things, kind of, I wanted this grass line to kind of shimmer as well. I don't want this scene looking like this color scheme though, but um, it's looking too hot right now. Okay, here's, this is moving into, okay, this is jungle green. It's a little bit more of an earthy green. And let's use this down in my shadow area, so if there's shadows in the stamp itself, then, you know, feel free to go back in with something like this. Maybe in the shadows down here, underneath the trees, like at the base of the trunk. Maybe kind of anchoring it down with some darker tones might look good. So just look for the darker tones in the actual impression, or the image. Okay. I guess something like that. Things are usually darker in the foreground, so I don't know if I'll use any of this in the background uh, green. Uh, probably not. Okay, that was the jungle green. Maybe I'll leave that out. I might use that again. Uh, elm green? Let's try this. By the way, these ones are the uh, Marvy uh, La Plume. Okay, and I'll kind of blend in some of that green. A little bit. It's a little bit of a... I don't know. Kind of a yellowy olive green to me. Which looks okay. I don't think I'll use any more of that. I'm not that hot on that color. Here's a lettuce green. You, you can see I'm just kind of moving through the uh, the greens that I happen to have in my sets. Or a few of them. Seeing if I like it. I don't like a couple of these recent ones. Okay. So, that being said, I'm going to go back with my lighter green. Where did, here it is, right here. This is what I do. I go back to this lighter green. This is what I was talking about with the 
uh, the glossy card stuck. I'm able to manipulate this. I'm able to kind of dissolve some of those colors that have already been laid down and are sitting on the surface of the paper and I'm able to go back into it and kind of reconstitute those you know, the inks that are still surface oriented and I'm able to blend them in, out and into the color scheme a little bit more. So, I don't know, you can see your application, or this is why I see my application of colors. I see it as kind of, I wouldn't say it's temporary, but it definitely is less than permanent when applied because you can kind of go back into it and re... Uh, well, put it back in the, like I said, solution. Kind of reconstitute it. Okay, let's bring some of this up here a little bit more. This may end up looking more kind of pastel in finish. These darker tones. This one is a pale green. It's a little bit more of a warmer green. And this is a shuttle art green. Pale green. It's a little bit of a darker value than the uh, the Marview Cheetah one. Okay. All right. And maybe you can use your blender pens as well. All right, I need several very, very pale blues. Okay, let's go with these right here. From different, you know, manufacturers. These ones are double-sided right here. The shuttle art ones, these ones are not. Although I don't really use the chisel tip off this one very often. If I had a really, really light color, okay, let's go with the cool gray point Five, I think. Okay, let's go with the point five cold gray. I mean, it's a very, very light value in terms of their particular numbering system. You probably can't even see it on camera. Before I put too much down, I think I better stamp my uh, black branch in here. No, I tell you what, let's do that one in a versifying black and not stamp it right now. The versifying we have to stamp in the end. Okay, this is a pastel blue. Kind of going right along the edge of this bank right here. And let's mix it in. Marvy has, I mean, uh, the La Plumes have this one called Pale Blue, and it's really, really light blue. You almost can't even see it. It's almost like a blender pen. But the color is just so subtle. But it's a great blending tool. Instead of using your blender for everything, you can use your lighter tones uh, to bring into your scene for whatever effect you're going after. Let's see what we have here. Aquamarine. Let's try this one. I'm taking it from the shoreline there and kind of blending it in like this. I'm trying to go for this tapered type of mark from the outside edge in.
Okay, this is what I always talk about too in my videos. Just bring some of those lighter tones into your other areas to give a little more continuity to those areas that otherwise wouldn't have that hue incorporated into them. So in other words, putting this really light blue over all these areas, it, it will be one of those things that helps to kind of unify the different areas and the different depths within the scene. Okay, so these areas back the distance are supposed to be, you know, miles away, and then you have the same color down in the foreground, so you're unifying these areas in terms of depth, but you know, it's not really depth. It's these things are not far away. They're, you know, they're a couple inches away on the same piece of paper, you know, this two dimensional piece, but it helps to kind of at least give the illusion of um, kind of harmony, spatial harmony within this given scene. Okay, so that blue is running throughout here. We're developing a little bit of a lighting scheme down here, down here by bringing in these colors, but then kind of tapering them off when we're going from each side like that. called baby blue. Kind of adding this in at different stages, these different colors, they act differently. So I have a lot of that lighter blue in there, so this is kind of acting a little bit differently. When I do that little streak, it's kind of blending out as so though it's in like water or something like that. But it's still not real Kind of, uh, it's not um, tapered and blended as much as I want, so you go back in with the lighter one like this and just kind of blend it out. And do it fairly quickly, at least on glossy, because it, it will set up. I mean, it does give you time to kind of manipulate it before it dries and really soaks into the uh, paper or whatever it's doing. Um, see this right here? This one's really blending in. Like that, so it's almost just like borrowing that value or intensity, and then you can kind of spread it out and dilute it. I wouldn't say as much as you want, but enough though. What I'm finding, at least, I don't know. Then you can go for some of those little other kind of textures that the uh, alcoholings provide by, you know, doing that buildup of. Uh, of, uh, media. Okay, something up here. You know, it's messing down on this water is a little bit of green, huh? So we brought blue up here, and the green, I mean, I don't know, the, the blue, it, it could use something. I don't ha really have enough tone down here, so let's bring some of this green into it like so, and that in turn will bring a little bit of unity and harmony between the water and the grassy areas up top. But I'm just doing it in a very light value, very light value. It kind of warms up the, the water as well, which isn't a bad thing. Okay, fun with alcohol markers. Huh. Uh. I'm looking up at that sky. I 
I'd really like to do some dye basting up there, but I'm experimenting with what can be done with alcohol markers at this point in time, so let's just leave it as is up there, but let's it's too white. I need to come into it. This is that pale blue again. <laughs> it, I tell you, this might as well be a, a, a blender pen. Yeah, it's there. It knocked down some of the uh, the white of the uh, paper. You can see this is kind of darker than this, right? But it sure is subtle. Um, Okay, let's go to let's go to that cool gray again. Let's go chisel tip. Coming in from the outside and uh, maybe maybe some blue <laughs> uh, clouds would have been good. I don't know. This is that texture that kind of really starts to happen in uh, alcohol inks that I don't have a lot of control over or any. Let's go in for those little ridges like that. Okay, let's bring some of that down in the water too. Let's, just so we have a little bit of continuity between sky and reflection. Using the chisel tip, you really get these colors kind of moving around. Boy, the rate at which you kind of move this too really makes a difference. Because you have this ink kind of um, whatever dispensing applying to this paper. And you can see the separation kind of happening as I move across there. And it's not moving. To, it's not moving up here as much because I haven't. I don't have those layers underneath. I guess like I do down here. So I need to kind of remember that. a little bit of blue. There goes the aquamarine again. And some of this aquamarine up here. Maybe I'll kind of I'll color some of these little areas up here that just kind of developed. So if I see a space like this in here, maybe I'll color that in. I'll try to stay with um, some of those textures that have been developed and I'll or that have been created, and I'll develop them from there, maybe. Okay, let's do the same thing down here. Go into some of these textures and Build them out a little bit. That way they seem perhaps a little bit more uh, purposeful. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this cosmos. Is that the one that was real warm? Getting kind of familiarized uh, with familiarizing myself with some of these colors. I thought one of these was a little bit more yellowy orange than what it looked like on the cap when I was doing it. And it's not this one, this one's real pink.
Okay, do I have a incredibly pale pink? I, I don't remember. This one right here. There's a little black on there. Uh, pale pink. Okay. Well, the one, this is pale lilac. Uh, let's give it more pink ish. Okay, so I'm going to bring a little bit of this tinge of this color down in here. Okay, that's what I'm looking for there. It's really, really light in value. Okay, see that? It's bringing a little bit more harmony between that area and this, I think. Let's see what it looks like. Look like in the sky. Okay. A little bit up in the sky, as well as the water. All right, let's have some fun with gel pens now. And I'm going to grab a selection of pen colors that were similar to the ones that I've used. Actually, here's not a gel pen, but it's a pink uh, pastel paint pen from Marvy. And I'm looking at my set of shuttle art pens and I'm going to be grabbing various pinks out of there. I want them kind of dull. So the pastel ones are the ones that I'm kind of going for. Now this one's a glitter one. I don't want that. I don't really make a kind of an interesting touch. This one might be a little bit too bright. This one might be the neon pink, but just in general, those ones and this one. Now, I didn't go so dark with my coloring. That's a little bit too bright. It's like a Hello Kitty pink or something. <laughs> Which is fine, but maybe not for this scene. Okay, this is just a pastel pink right here. Let's go in and almost like color, you know, some of these areas. And let's try to build up some tones, okay. Uh, mostly I'm doing it in the closest trees right here, okay. If the area got a little bit too dark, so I'm just going back in and kind of reclaiming some lighter areas. But you can just use it to color in. My suggestion would be to retain some of those lighter areas that you've established with your coloring process, you know, the alcohol inks. I'm kind of adding it away. <laughs> I'm not necessarily adding in the shadows, I'm just kind of scumbling it everywhere, but I'm just being careful not to color in the whole thing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just oscillating it, so I don't know, there's not a big rhyme or reason, there's, I don't know if there's a strategy as much as kind of just trying to balance it out and retain some of those lighter areas as well. Yeah, it's a little bit of pink. Uh, let's bring some of that down in this little reflection down here. My water. Over the white, I the thing that I thought after I did that. Okay, this is this white even working? Let's see. Yeah, this one's this one. It's really translucent. Yeah. So see, when I draw it on black, you can see it when it's 
drawn out. But it is very, very subtle. Okay, I need to go with something a little bit more opaque, or a lot more opaque. This is the Uniball Signo pen, okay? You can see that difference between that one and the Shuttle Art one. The Shuttle Art one is good for different things, like I was talking about before with the uh, Sakura white paint pen. It's more translucent, so the colors underneath will show through, which there's certainly a, uh, a need for in certain types of scenes, you know, where you don't want the white pen mark to be quite so bold and apparent. You want it to be more of a kind of a subtle highlight within a given space, and that's when kind of more translucent uh, colors were good. This, this too, I mean, it's, it's, this is translucent too, but it's just not quite so um, transparent as the shuttle art one is on black paper. Okay, so adding this around, adding some highlights in. I did end up losing some of my lighter areas, so I'm just going to go in with some of this white and maybe reclaim at least some value of the white that's been lost. It'll still be not quite white though, like I said. Okay, in my grasses, yeah, I can add some of this down. There's little kind of shimmering textures within that space. I'm not going to take too much time on this because I plan on using a lot of that uh, white pigment ink and making this really, really foggy and kind of misty and mystical in appearance, at least that's what I'm going to try to do, what it ends up looking at. We never know for sure until it happens. down in the water for a little mm, kind of a shimmering water look. Sharpie pens in quite some time, so the piston wasn't really shaken, and I think the ink, uh, the paint separated from the binder a lot until I kind of got it flowing. Maybe I got the pink one flowing again last time. Okay, these can at times be a little bit more opaque, <laughs> especially if I shake it up more and I didn't leave it sitting around, but the paint seems to be a kind of a thicker. Um, type of medium than the uh, gel pens. So sometimes, you, like I said, you can get a little bit more of a pronounced um, dot. Okay, I'm putting some of this down in this green. Like say there's, you know, millions of these cherry blossoms and, you know, the leaves, the petals kind of fall down. They fall into the water as well. Like this. It can be very, very subtle because this paint is, you know, very light. But then I think when you look at it close up or either that or on a kind of a more detailed subconscious level, these little touches like this that we're adding down, we're adding into the grass, I think it kind of gives you a, you know, a different feel in the end result, even if those marks are not quite apparent. Okay. It, 
it all looks very kind of unresolved to me in terms of the uh, general color scheme, but I'm, I want to see what this looks like when I kind of mist it over with a pigment ink. Okay, I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's just get into it. I think I'm going to actually use, instead of using a Q-tip, which is my applicator of choice, I think with the degree that I'm going to be doing. I wonder if a cotton ball would work. I, get, I was going to use this um, stylus tool, which I might, but I'm going to try a cotton ball and see how that works. Okay, cotton ball. Let's see how this works. I think it's time for a new strip of paper. Okay, let's see here. Hero Hughes um, Unicorn White Pigment Ink. Okay, let's see. I have no idea how much is even applying on this. Boy, I really have to kind of smash that down. And, oh, I think I got maybe too much now. Okay, so... Hmm, that looks kind of nice there, doesn't it? Huh. Okay. <laughs> Alright, this is my first time with the uh, cotton, so... I'm not going to make too many comments as far as, like, a technique thing, because I need to figure it out myself, but... In theory, you know, we're going to be applying it in the same kind of way that I do with the, uh, you know, a little cotton swab in like a small area, but this is going to be kind of a large application of this. I want everything to be kind of just a blanket of fog over everything. So no more of that um, talk of kind of this um, oscillation of a uh, light and dark, you know, throughout the scene. I, I think just in general, this scene is going to be kind of a uh, foggy and misty and kind of defined by subtlety <laughs> because we don't have too much uh, contrast, okay? <clears throat> so this is the reason why you know, I wasn't really being too careful about, you know, my gel pen work and coloring and whatnot. All right. It's really hard to tell how much just kind of transferring to this. Uh, I don't know, so far so good. I'm generally thinking that this is definitely the uh, the applicator of choice um, right now for this gigantic slathering of uh, pigment ink on here. I'll, I'll be a little bit more specific and I'll add more with a, a different tool, but right now I'm just kind of going for this overall uh, kind of coverage. The background hills and sky, I'll put a pretty big thick coating on. And when this dries, it's going to be darker than what it looks like right now. So I'm going to apply more than what I think looks ideal.
I, I can almost sit here and watch it get kind of more and more um, translucent, you know, kind of moving in the direction of transparent as I sit here, so it's kind of interesting <clears throat> watching that happen. Okay, so we have that. A lot of things are kind of buried in there in terms of um, visibility. Everything's very, very subtle, that's for sure. Okay, let me switch paper. Alright, I'm switching off to a Q-tip to try to build up a little bit of a heavier concentration in a couple areas. What I'm doing is I'm trying to uh, create this like nice thick bank of fog in a couple areas within the uh, composition. See where this mountain kind of uh, meets this row of trees on the uh, stamp. I'll put some fog in kind of behind these trees and these ones right here. I'll try to create a little bit more of a you know uh, separation. And I'm with the use of this white paint, white pink and pigment ink, not white paint. Although it does, to me, act like paint in many ways. background hills kind of creating a little bit more of a separation right in there it's like that fog or, or mist that kind of sits in the bowl between uh, uh, mountains or ridges or whatnot it's kind of trapped in that area So hopefully you can kind of see it a little bit in there. And this whole row of trees down here, let's go in here a little bit. Let's put some <laughs> foggier, I was going to say fog, but it's foggier. Um, touches down down there. Oscillating the uh, shoreline here. I guess I did end up oscillating it a little bit. It's just that there's pigmenting, a slathering of it over everything, but you still want you know a little bit of vari variation in there to make it a little bit more of a diverse surface.
All right, here we go. It's, it's, it's almost like an abstract or something at this point in time. Now, I, th I wonder if it's just too early for me to uh, stamp my branch in here. The branch is going to be very pronounced. Okay, maybe I'll go like this, or I can't figure out which way, maybe this way. Okay, I'm just going to go for it. And hopefully I'm not doing it too early. There's so much pigment, black, uh, white pigment ink in there. I'm not sure if I can do this yet and have it stick. Yeah, I could, I guess I could, uh, heat set it. It's probably what I should do, but, uh, I don't think I want to do that. I don't feel like doing that right now. I feel like just stamping right into it. Okay. I'm trying to find the right angle there, and I can always do two, but I think I want to keep it fairly simple here. I'm trying to figure out which way I want to do it, like this. Well, I can also do it like that. But I, I like the idea of it coming from below, just this one branch, like, you know, we're on this near shore and here's this object really close to us and then I plan on you know doing some cherry blossoms on this branch of some sort or in some way I, I guess I should say okay I'm gonna, I'm going to really let this sit on here and uh, transfer over if it does I don't know if it will or not, because again, I'm not quite sure how it's going to look when I'm stamping it into wet white pigment ink that's been, you know, generously applied to that given area. Let's see. Okay, now this is where like a stamp uh, positioner would work really well, because you can just go for multiple impressions. Okay, no problem. See, I do it all the time. <laughs> Not really. I didn't know. I figured that I didn't use too much white pigment ink down here, but where it went up here, I was worried about this black switching off to like a gray, or if anything, where I stamped it over the white, because sometimes you stamp wet into wet, and where it goes wet into wet, when you pull this up, it's like a vacuum, and the ink that you've, you know, thought would transfer just stays on the, uh, the piece of rubber. All right, now I'm going to go look at a couple little photographs of some um, uh, cherry blossoms and look what, see what that looks like. I, I have a feeling that my idea is to uh, do little pink little flowers or something like that in both white. Uh, not the shuttle art one. I need this one to be really pronounced. I'll do it in the... Uh, you know, all signo white and pink, I think. But let me go look at a couple of photographs. I, I might do a little dot, maybe first with the dye based inks. I'm not sure. I'll try to figure it out and do some kind of stylization. Okay, there's different ways to go, of course, with this. I'm just bringing this up on the uh, internet. But see, here, this one, they're really, really pink. This one too, but these ones are more white. This was kind of a combination. Maybe it's just how light is hitting them in different areas. There's different types of cherry trees too, but um, uh, I was thinking about going for something like this, where it's oscillation, you know, the uh, the petals in front of the branch and behind. That might be a problem though, trying to draw onto pigment ink with a gel pen. It'll just scratch it and it'll kind of go right in my pen. This is one of those instances when I definitely feel that, you know, that pen that I was talking about, that white paint pen, that other one that was more opaque would really work for this because it was, you know, an actual paint that you were putting a drop of and it was fairly thick. Oh! I think I know what I can do. I can do the Dr. Martin's bleed-proof white, I think, on here. 
All right, well, okay, here, let's do a little experiment first. Let's try and see what this looks like. I don't think this will apply, but remember, this is a gel pen that's working pretty good, you know. It, it's pretty opaque, but, well, it's translucent, but it's okay, but let's see how this works right here. Actually, this isn't too bad right here. Maybe I don't need to go to the Dr. Martens. But as I put a dot into that black, it's definitely picking up some of the black. And then as I dot out there, it's kind of putting a you know, black dot around in those areas <laughs> as I stamp it out. Okay, this is okay. All right, what I'm doing is I'm just I'm kind of clustering this a little bit. This is a, this is going to be not that any of anything in these videos is quite dynamic, but I, mean, I should really uh, do uh, those time lapses or speed up these parts right here. But let's see if anything happens in this process that occurs to me that I need to change. I need to build up some of these clusters that are a little bit more, that are a little bit bigger and kind of spread out from the uh, branch a little bit farther. Is this Japanese garden in uh, this uh, local park? Well, San Diego. It's not lo real local to me, but close enough. But anyways, they had this cherry blossom, uh, whatever festival in their Japanese gardens there in Bilbo Park one year, and I'm sure it goes on every year. But uh, I'll never go back there again. You can even walk in there. It was so crowded. Definitely quite a popular day there. Okay, so putting these little blossoms in front of this branch and breaking up the line of the branch is kind of interesting in terms of the overall look. This is so subtle, too, because um, in the background, it's fairly light, so it's, it's not really apparent, you know, kind of what's kind of forming out there. So I'm going to have to do it a little bit with some pink, too, I think. So I, I think you got to put some pink into it. And I'm still, I haven't ruled out that uh, Dr. Martin's white. You know, just to kind of stand out a little bit more. But we'll see. Okay, I need to be, need to be careful because I just smeared this um, branch down here. But since I did that, I'll just kind of put the, you know, a lot of blossoms around it like this. Okay, now I almost smeared that one. I need to watch that. Okay, now well, this is an experiment, so let me 
try some of this um, Dr. Martin's right here. Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's an opaque watercolor. And when I say it's opaque, it's very opaque. Um, I don't know what's happening in here lately. It never used to happen, but maybe I have too much moisture in here, though. It's because it's starting to kind of... I uh, don't get grossed out, but it's kind of creating a little mold in here. I must have gotten some kind of something in there or something. I've had this for, I don't know, 20 years, and it you know, hasn't done that. So I'm just pulling that membrane. I'll just wash that off later. I pull that membrane off, and this paint is fine. This is a really old bottle. I don't know. And it, it, you can reconstitute it, too, if it dries out completely. It does all the time on me. And, uh, you know, you just add a little few drops of water, and it goes right back into solution. Okay, I'm going to be just using a fine-tip brush here. Actually, it's all crusted out from the last time I used it, because I didn't clean it up. But I'm just going to take this and put a little, you know, little dots like that down into here, so. It's a little bit brighter and lighter <laughs> because it is so opaque. So maybe it'll have kind of a slightly more kind of three dimensional. Okay, now I'm picking up some of that pigment ink where it hasn't dried yet. Okay, so that is a consideration here. And I'll just need to watch out for that a little bit. One thing that's definitely missing is the pink, which will come soon. <laughs> Someone who's a painter would be able to, you know, be more effective at uh, doing this or knowing what to do here. I'm probably just being very, oh, I don't know, careful and uh, conservative in terms of my approach to this, but uh, I'm definitely more comfortable kind of taking it slowly here. And building this up like this. I kind of like what's happening though. It's changing a touch.
As I do this, I'm reminded of uh, this time my parents uh, took a tour of uh, China, and uh, this guy did this cherry blossom painting for, you know, like tours, and he painted this branch, and then he, his um, little blossoms was dipping his finger into paint, and, you know, so there are all these fingerprints, and my mom bought a, bought one of the, his paintings off of him. Okay, so I have this up here like that. <laughs> it looks like that. I'm going to put some of these little petals kind of like in the wind here too. Like that. Kind of drifting off like so. Hmm, while I have this paint out too, maybe I'll do a couple little things out here. Just bring in a little bit more light, even though it's, you know, fairly subtle because this whole area is, you know, basically you know, white it out, but having a few little areas with a little bit more lit details could uh, be good. Plus it's bringing that continuity to the uh, overall scene in terms of uh, common texture, universal textures being used uh, in different areas throughout the scene. In could be a very subtle way, but nevertheless they're there, and I think that those types of things are picked up on a subconscious level as well as a visual one. The videos get very, very quiet <laughs> when I'm doing something that I where I really don't know what I'm doing. So I don't really have anything really to talk about in terms of a description of what I'm doing because it's all just kind of a big question mark in my mind <laughs> as to the overall and the technique, you know, because I don't know if it's being effective or if it's uh, taking away from the overall look. I'm just kind of like observing it um, happen as much as anything. Okay, so that is that. Now, let me take a look at this pink here and see if I can add some little pink touches down here and if I'll make, a, make it look a little bit more cherry blossom-like to have these touches in here. I think it's a good thing that I have this paint pen this time as opposed to a gel pen only. I think I can get that paint in there a little bit easier 
than the gel pen. Okay, this is very subtle. I think it's more subtle than I thought. It's a little more translucent than I thought. This pink pen, when it's new, I think it showed up a little bit more. Um, I thought the paint... Okay, I shook this up a little bit, and it's a little bit more distinct. Not too, but... Kind of adding these little dots down on this, into this mix. Okay. Ew. Sorry about that. Okay, that branch really shows up there a lot. So let Let's go into the scene and with this cosmetic brush, let's kind of darken in the area around it a little bit. It's, it's going to be tricky though. I, I don't know if this is a good idea or a bad one, but we're going to try it anyways and we're going to put a slight vignette over this. Okay. And, okay, let me blot this off a little bit too. Let's see if we can do this in a halfway graceful manner. Just to kind of contain the composition slightly. Okay, I think we can. We'll just go like that. It won't be too dark, alright? Or too framed off. Four corners for sure. Okay. Like that. I'll come across the top a little bit more. It's looking pretty good up in the sky, I think. It's giving a little bit more mood to the scene with those kind of subtle grays like that. Okay, so it's it's just using the darkest hue that we've used in the scene itself. So we did we stamped out that branch in black. So it's just kind of going in and introducing that same value into the mix. It doesn't have to be the same, or it's the same tone or whatnot. But it doesn't have to be the same value of it. slight containment of the composition of the elements in here.
Okay, there it is, right there. Okay, hmm. I don't know what I think about this piece. It's interesting. I think that branch in there has... There's some kind of a interesting lessons that can be taken from that branch um, right there. The background hills and everything are somewhat subtle. Maybe they could be stamped out in grays. I think more than color, maybe? Maybe that would look more effective. And it would match the branch a little bit more. I kind of like the way it goes back in the distance, though. Like that. And you kind of get lost up there. Actually, I kind of... Uh, I think we can use a little bit more of a, a stronger um, misting effect. I'm trying to think of the right word. Let's see here. I think it was um, a lot lighter, but you know, it dried and it became a lot more uh, translucent here. So. Kind of building up that cloud type of uh, separation, that mist separation in here between the uh, the different um, distances, representational distances throughout here. That maybe, yeah. And this mountain back here, hill, mountain, whatever, um, is really far back, so let's really put a lot of uh, pigment ink over the top of it to try to obscure it even more. Okay, that looks a little bit better. And here, let's try to keep, you know, a little bit more of a varied value scheme too in here. The more distant the location within this space, the lighter it becomes. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Base of this tree, maybe? Same with these trunks over here. <laughs> I am really putting on a pretty big slathering. It's the amount of which I usually uh, recommend not doing, but that's in much darker scenes where it, it you know, becomes a much more apparent, but in here it just kind of it just kind of blends in because everything is fairly light except for this foreground branch. Okay, so let's go with something like that. So cherry blossoms forever. Eh, you know, uh, I think. Like I said, I think this would be better in a color that's related to this branch down here, not purple. <laughs> so, uh, another little experiment. And, uh, yeah, some things to uh, take and some things to leave, I think.